Good morning, it is an exciting day today because we're going to be working on trying to get running water into the kitchen. <laughs> so we've got Uncle Nick coming over to give us a hand, but I'm off to the cafe for a couple of hours so I will be leaving you with you and a Nick and hopefully they'll have got somewhere by the time I, I get home. Right then, we've just got back from local shop, Plumber Supplies, to go and get some bits. We think we're all good. I'm gonna show you what the plan is. Are you knocking all in my ass? Yes, I am. I'm a little concerned. I'm trying to get this one out, but this bottom one's moving. Look. Ooh. I'm not sure how much foundation is under there. If any. So what we'll do is remove that. Yep. And rebuild it all back up. Cool. After we put the pipe in. Makes sense. So, the kind of end goal here is or something that we want to try and eventually do is to get water drinking water out of our well into our kitchen so we're kind of doing this a little bit wrong because we should be starting on step one but we're actually starting on step six so behind me here we have a water drop reverse osmosis system so we need to get that installed in the kitchen whereas ideally we should probably have cleaned and capped the well first but we need to wait till the end of summer because at the moment water is very, very valuable. So here you can see is our well. We're probably about halfway. So that's four metres of water there. Quite a bit. There's a snake down by there. I don't know if you saw it. Um, yeah, the last thing we want to do is pump all this out and it's not going to rain for two months. So it'll be empty for a while. So we'll do that at the end of summer. Oh, there's a butterfly stuck in there. I wonder if that's what the snake's going for. So here is where the sink is going to go, and hopefully somewhere here is where this hole is going to come out. So the plan is that we'll have wastewater coming out of the sink back into there, and then water in through here as well. Fingers crossed. Nice. Going in? No. Yes. Get that out. That stone right in the middle there? That stone? Yeah. Really funny shot your head. <laughs> <laughs> like the wall's falling down on the inside. Oh I can see ya. Oh. <laughs> 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 I know, I'm kind of worried about it coming down on top of my arm being stuck in Maybe the... like wedge in a stone. Mm. Maybe.
Ya, hey. <laughs> cool. So that's both, that's your waste plate. And the water. So we need to do now. It's uh concrete these back in, cement these back in. <laughs> So we're going to take this elbow off and put a T on it so we can T to the uh, Pozzigna. Oh, is it turned on? I guess that was still under pressure. Just a little bit. Ah. We'll cool you down. Or was it hot water? That was warmish. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nick was just telling me you don't need the Teflon tape on these up because of like how the the that black thing yeah. is the seal. So what happens is this the rubber ring is the seal. This piece pushes against the angle. That just drop everywhere. This pushes that by means of this. Yeah, and the taper inside of these come. So there's a taper in there. Yeah, yeah. It squeezes that against the rubber and squeezes, oh, cool. squeezes it against the pipe. Kitchen. I do. So Nick, why did we not drill a hole in the wall? So, the reason we didn't drill a hole in the wall, which I, I expect some of you will be asking, <laughs> uh, this wall is, we found, about this thick, yeah? So when they built it, they would have built the outside face and the inside face and then just filled the in, in between with loose rubble, uh -huh. yeah? When you're trying to drill through with a, with a core bit, through loose rubble, everything falls down on it and it just jams. Once you get through a hard stone and you get into the loose stuff, it just it would just jam up all the time. So that's the reason why we just took it out with a bar and slowly worked our way through the wall. So we get, now all we've got to do is fill that back up with concrete or mortar of some description. We can probably end up doing mortar and then some stones and just keep pushing stuff in there. So these two things feel like a really big step forward for this feeling more like an actual house. So we now have the grey water going outside. There's a fly on the lens. Yeah, the grey water will still be going into a bucket, but that bucket is now not in the house. So if we ever accidentally forget to empty it, it's not going to overflow all over the floor, which it has done a couple of times. Yeah, I think you're not allowed to just let grey water flow into the land. It needs to be properly managed. So just in a bucket, I can put it on the veggie garden. But we're one step closer to that being a thing I don't have to think about anymore and to actually have running water in the kitchen we've been what nearly three years two and a half years here and to have a tap that we can just turn on is going to be dreamy so um Yuan is currently watching the end of Formula One so I thought I would just see how far I can get on my own go away fly there's a lot of flies today and the instructions look fairly simple so look at it again <laughs> 
Just drinking water. So we did actually release a midweek video that goes into a lot more detail about the Warstrop G3 system and also a little more in depth of the installation process. So I will link that in the description if you want to see a little bit more of that and find out some more information about the system. So here is just a sped up version of me putting it all together. Right, so this is one of those things that Carissa wants to do and I know people absolutely hate it when people do this. So I figured... What do you mean hate it? Because people like leaving it on for as long as possible oh, really? to, to preserve the glass. Look at it go. Look at it go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is the other thing I've not been able to do in the kitchen. Wash my hands. So a few of you will be aware that over the last 18 months, 18 months or so, we've had an absolute nightmare with vehicles. Firstly the van breaking down in the Netherlands, then we bought a new car, had it for six weeks and the timing chain broke and ruined the engine and it turns out it's a super rare engine and really difficult to find. But we are making some progress with some amazing help from somebody, you know who you are, amazing, amazing helper that we've had, but you know who you are, muito obrigado. But yeah, so update of the last couple of weeks is, dun dun dun, the van is gone. So we actually managed to ship it back to the UK, um, which was quite pricey, but probably the simplest, safest, least anxiety inducing way of getting it back to the UK. Matriculating it was just going to cost far too much. Um, so basically I've given it to my mum. She wanted to buy a camper van and seeing as ours is already half a camper van and she can have it for no cost other than the cost of shipping it over there. Yeah, we figured that was the best way. So yeah, that's an update for you. We think we're getting to the end of the, the golf saga. Fingers crossed. We planted the garlic uh, here back in December when the soil was a lot more moist and I knew it needed a lot of work here but it's the summer that reveals to you how bad the soil is. It's just been the worst onion and garlic harvest ever. Uh, I think we probably didn't water enough either but any watering we did do just didn't get to the, to the plants so I'm not going to grow here anymore, I don't think. I was thinking I might try and build up a bed here, but for now, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm going to go back to the garden bed down on the plateau where I've already spent a couple of years working the soil. I keep changing my mind about where I'm going to put the garden beds. I will continue to harvest my very depressing garlics. <laughs> We're going to have to come up with something to do with these because they're not really worth the effort of peeling them to cook with.
Good morning, everyone. Sun's out, so I'm going to do some sun drying of tomatoes. We have a glut of them, so we're going to use um, the sun dryer we made in the first year. We haven't quite upgraded it yet, but we don't really need to. So I got sent this gun from a company called Bugger Salt and you put salt in here and you do that to flies. It's a proper like big boys toy and I'm telling you it totally transforms your relationship with flies. Because fly swatting is kind of horrible, you just get squashed flies all over the place. But this thing is superb. And they've gotten used to it now, so all it takes is one shot and they'll hear it and they'll disappear. So, thanks, Bugger Salt. Brilliant piece of kit. So this is what we've got, as you can see here is a bit broken and very very rustic but it's performing a very simple task so it doesn't need to do much. So oh, it's broken this solid engineering. So basically it's an old fly net that we've just put onto a frame with enough excess to go all the way around it to stop the flies from getting it. So very simple. You take your tomatoes and some salt. Salt helps dehydrate the tomatoes even quicker. So, and obviously it goes well with tomatoes. But there are probably other ways of doing it. This is just a dead simple way. And then we let the sun do its thing. So we have not made as much progress uh, this week as we would like to, mostly because of this little sausage dog. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned that um, for the last couple of months she's had an issue with her jaw, quite a lot of pain in it, can't yawn, kind of squeals if we try and touch it. We had an x-ray and they couldn't see anything, there's nothing visible. She's had a blood test and she's been on anti-inflammatories. Yeah, as soon as she comes off the anti-inflammatories, the pain comes back. So then we went back on anti-inflammatories and are deciding what to do next. And I don't know if it's because of the anti-inflammatories, but for three nights she had really bad diarrhea and was waking us up sort of every hour or two to be let out. I'm very grateful that she would wake us up because I did not want to <laughs> get up in the morning for that mess in the kitchen but we've had very disrupted sleep for three nights which means no early morning wake-ups as we catch up on sleep and then it's a bit too hot to do anything so it's a little bit frustrating that we've not been able to continue working on the driveway. I think that's just kind of a very slow background summer job because I think in the summer we just have to really 
slow down and um, yeah it's nice to just have something to kind of work on when we can but yeah finally last night she let us sleep the whole night through and she's feeling much better we've been giving her just rice and one egg a day which seems to be helping and we are now going on Friday to the pet hospital in Coimbra um, for her to get a biopsy and a CT scan. They think it might be something muscular. It's very strange. If anyone has ever had this kind of an issue with their dog before, we'd love to hear from you of your experience. She just can't fully open her mouth um, to yawn. She's fine eating, she's fine barking. <laughs> But yeah, if we try and open it, she squeals. So yeah, it's a little bit worried about the little sausage dog. She uh, she seems quite well in herself today. <laughs> she just wants to be lying on the floor sleeping. Poor little bean. So yeah, send sausage your get well wishes. And uh, we'll keep you updated on the results from that. Mr. Samal has also been in the vet this week because he had a big um, abscess on his neck here. So he's on antibiotics and there's a big horrible hole on the other side. He's very happy, but yeah. Animals, we the vets has become our, our second home really <laughs> recently. <laughs> Poor boy. So ever since I harvested the garlic from here and saw how bad the soil was, I've just been thinking about this part of the garden because even if I'm not going to make it into my veggie garden, I still really want to work on the soil, like we want to improve every part of our land and I think trying to just build up the soil here and just plant some perennial self-seeding flowers. We've got a load of um, lupin seeds that Ewan collected. It's just so compacted, so exposed. When we moved here there was actually just a big pile of rubbish here, um, like an old engine. They did plough here, um, all the soil on this side of the land. So yeah, the soil is just not happy and we can do something about it. So it's kind of going to be my mission, this little part of the garden, to, to make it make it a bit happier. So I'll give you a before now. I'm going to harvest everything else that's left here and see what I can do to make it better. One of the worst onion harvests ever. There's a few just about big enough to be worthwhile. But yeah, I've done a lot of pottering here. This is all the lupin, oh, the lupin seeds that Yuan collected before he strimmed. I'm just going to chuck them all over here. Lupins are really good for fixing nitrogen and they just seem to thrive here. So hopefully they'll grow whenever they decide. Smile so wants to tell you that we still have some olive branches that need chipping, so I'll probably do that over here as well, just to add some more mulch to the ground. Hmm? you still got your poorly neck. The hole in his neck is enormous. It's really gross. <laughs> oh, Albie. Albie's turn. <laughs> you gonna help? <laughs> still viable. A bit funny looking. Um, hopefully they've not kind of rotted because I think they did get a bit wet. 
but also just all like the chaff and the stems I'm going to chuck on the ground with them to just add some more like structure as hopefully some soil gets built. <laughs> 